All right, ready to learn Zotero? Um, most people know that Zotero is a great tool for storing citations and using those citations to create a bibliography, but it's way more than that. I have a weird looking slide here. <laughs> Um, Zotero is a research tool that you can use to store sources that are found on the web and in library databases. So here you can see I've done a search, um, does my cat love me in Google Scholar? And this little um, icon pops up because I have this installed in my Zotero, in, in my browser. So this is the Zotero icon. Um, and so I'm able to collect items from this page and it recognizes that. And then here I am in our library catalog, and again, that icon is there, um, and I can use that to save this book if I would like to. And here I am in a biological sciences database, and you can see that the icon is a little different. This time it's a web-based document, and so a little piece of paper that's plain indicates that it's either a web page or a web-based document. And that icon will change a lot and we'll cover a couple more of those examples a little later on, but I wanted you to know that it is kind of like a cart in um, any of the shopping tools that you use online like Amazon, but instead of just searching one site, it cross searches almost every database that we have um, and the web when you're doing your general web searching. So it's really fantastic for gathering sources and then storing them in your Zotero library. But it, like I said, it does way more than that. It also lets you take notes and store notes on the individual sources that you've saved. So once it's in your library, you can store and save those notes. Um, and I'll demonstrate that feature. And then also what I love about it is it lets you organize your ideas for a research paper. So you can sort your resources into collections and sub-collections. And I find this particularly helpful for organizing the ideas for a paper, managing my time, um, by creating individual collections on each of the topics in my paper and then placing the items related to those topics into collections, I'm forcing myself to really think about the type of sources that I have found. And I also am thinking about how they're related to each other and how are the relevant key points that I wanna make in my paper um, being supported by research. So that's one of the things I really love is that in addition to storing sources found on the web, um, and in library databases and taking notes on those sources, it helps me organize my ideas. And then once I have those ideas identified and organized, it helps me plan my time. Because imagine if you have a folder that just has the resources related to one portion of your paper, you don't have to look for them anymore. You've already taken the notes on them. And now you can just open that folder when you're ready to work on that portion and just kind of decide how do these relate and then you start writing. If you get bored writing that section, you move to a different folder. So that's um, just a couple of the things related to Zotero um, is organizing the ideas for research papers. And we also um, cite sources in any style and create bibliographies. That's also what Zotero is really known for it is that you can um, take an individual source and cite it in any style, MLA, APA, um, Chicago, so, and there's hundreds of other styles, believe it or not, but you can also take a group of sources and create bibliographies out of those. And there's actually a tool that you can install into Microsoft Word or Google Docs that'll let you insert citations as you're writing. So if you've built out your Zotero library as you're writing, you can just click a button, it'll pop open a search box, you type in your author, keyword, um, title, something related to that work, and it's gonna pull up a list of things in your Zotero library, and you decide which one you wanna put in. It creates the footnote or the in-text citation, and it'll also create the bibliography that you put into your page. So, like I said, this is a really fantastic tool. Um, and now that my sales pitch is done, I am going to have us talk about getting it installed on your computer. So some of you already have it installed on your computer, but um, if you don't, then I recommend that you do one of two things. So you can go to the Zotero.org page, and from that page, you are gonna click on download. So in the middle of the page, it says download. Um, or if you want additional help, you can go to libguides.agnescott.edu forward slash Zotero, and you can, um, get some instructions on how to install. So we have 
videos and screen captures um, that will help you. And it helps you for particular types of devices as well. So if you are on an iPad, there's specific instructions here for you if you're using it on an iPad. So Zotero works best when you are on a PC or a Mac. And if you are on a Mac, then currently Safari um, is having some problems with it. So the browser Safari, if you have that and that's the only browser you have, I'm gonna recommend that you go ahead and install a free version of Firefox or Chrome. So how many people, let me check the chat real quick. How many people um, have Chrome or Firefox on their, their um, uh, Mac? So Esther, did you raise your hand for um, saying yes, you do, or do you have a question? Yes, I do. Okay, awesome, just making sure. <laughs> All right, um, so I see some people have indicated in the chat that they have it and some people um, haven't. Anyway, if you, um, if you don't, then that's highly recommended. If you are working with a PC or a Mac, you will, once you click on this download, you'll see that it's going to ask you for two things. I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger. So you can see that it should ask you to create what we call the computer application. So you can see what kind of computer I'm on because it identifies what you're working on. If you are on a PC, this will say something different. Um, and you want to download this to your computer. If you have a Chromebook or if you are on an iPad or some other device, this might not work for you. Um, it really only works if you're on a regular style computer, you know, a laptop or um, a desktop computer. And this is going to just make it easier for you to manage your library. And it is required if you're working on that kind of tool. If you are in a Chromebook um, or on a Mac, then you will be allowed to install this connector. But the connector also has to be installed by the people who are using a PC or a desktop a Mac computer. So those of you who are on a PC or a Mac, you have to download both of these. You want to install the Chrome connector, or if you're in Firefox, it'll be called um, an extension. It'll identify what browser you're currently in, and it'll um, create that extension. And it'll ask you to download this computer program. This program lives on your computer, and it works with the connector. The connector lives in your browser and communicates with this program. Um, the reason why it works well with other devices is because technically, even though this is living on your computer, all of the Zotero items that you add into your collection will also live in your Zotero library in the cloud. So up here, you'll see that it has register or login. You don't have to click register just yet if you're already doing this download and the connector download because once you finish that process it'll prompt you to create a login but if you have already done these things but you're not really sure if you have a login i would go ahead and test it by clicking on login and seeing if it recognizes your login if it doesn't then you will um, it'll give you an option up here to click forgot your password and you can reset your password then um, if it doesn't remember who you are, maybe you didn't have one, and then you can register for a free account. So I'm going to pause for just a second to see if there's any questions about those key components. Um, the idea that you have to have, if you're on one of these two types of devices, um, PC or Mac, that you have to have both items, um, and how one is able to access their account. Do we have any questions about that so far? Um, I have a question. So we have to register for an account and we use our like Agnes Scott email and everything or you, do we already have one? You do not already have one. That's an excellent question. Um, it's a free tool that's available to everybody in the world. So you just create the account based off of whatever email address is going to work best for you. Okay. So thank if you, you want to keep your Agnes, you can. And you can always change that later. Okay. Any other questions? Awesome, well, we will move forward. So we have things downloaded. Um, as I said, the connector will live up here in your browser and you can already see in mine that it has this little piece of paper. It's a blank piece of paper. 
people who have been installing things into Chrome lately, Chrome must have instituted something new. But do you see this little splotch thing? It looks like a piece of paint. Um, this is our puzzle piece. It's um, what you use to um, make sure all your extensions are installed. And so you have to go through there to enable it. And then you might end up, let's see, um, I think you would pin it. So you can see how mine is pinned to my browser window. Um, when I unclick this, that little piece of paper goes away. When I click on it, it comes back. That's how you're going to know if there's items on a page that can be downloaded into your Zotero library. So um, the next thing that we need to do, um, let me show you really quickly what that will look like when you're searching. Um, I was going to go in a different order. But let's say I was searching for this book. I went into our database, ProQuest eBook Central. You'll see that that little icon now looks like a little book. And it says, Save to Zotero ProQuest eBook Library. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And what you'll see is it's adding it to my Zotero library. So if you've installed the tool onto your computer, then you should see something like this happen once you click on that icon. If you're on a Chromebook or on an iPad, it's going to either go into your bookmarks or it's going to go um, into the cloud. So you might not see this happen in those environments. Um, here's another example of what it looks like. So um, I'm on a New York Times page. I'd have to log in to get to this, but I want you to see that the, the little icon looks a little bit different. It's looking like a piece of uh, newspaper that somebody tossed onto my doorstep. So again, I could click on this. I don't think that, oh, it's, it is grabbing the um, article that I wanted, even though um, I don't have access to it. It's getting the citation information. So even if I don't have access to something, it's gonna grab that citation information. And then finally, here is a web-based um, scholarly publication. And you can see that this is a journal um, and it's got a little piece of paper that has writing on it. There's lots of other little icons. These are the three big ones that you'll see, but just notice that up here in your browser, it's always changing whenever it identifies content on there. And if I click on this, it'll add that content down into my Zotero library. Now I'm going to do a search from our library homepage um, just to show you one more example. So um, cats and affection and humans. So I'm going to run my search. Takes just a minute to get content, but keep your eye on this up here in the right corner. Remember right now it's seeing web pages. It's a blank sheet of paper. Top right corner, it's just a blank sheet of paper. It's gonna change in just a second because it was analyzing. And what did you guys see? What did it change to? Anybody can type that in the chat or say it out loud. A folder? Yes, a folder, fantastic. Okay, so a folder means that there's more than one item on the page that you could add into your Zotero library. So you can click on this, and here you can see that it's showing, um, here's the first item in my list, the photographed cat. It's listing that there. If I want to keep that, I can mark it here. Um, and then as I go down, maybe I want one of the next ones, or maybe I just want to preview the titles right here. Um, the cat who came in from the cold, beyond human. Um, I can mark all these and then um, I can click OK and you'll see that it's going to start adding those to my Zotero library. If the PDF is available, which none of mine um, grabbed that, then it would be uh, listed here. You'd see the PDF. Um, another option is when, let's see, let me go down into these results. I want to find something that's not a book, so let me narrow it down to just academic journals real quick. So again, keep an eye on that little spot. When I scroll through here and I find this one, maybe I want to look at this article and I click on it. Keep an eye on that again, 
it changes first to a blank sheet of paper because it thought it was a web page, but then it corrected itself. And now it's identifying it as a journal article. And now when I click on it, it's adding to my library and see it's grabbing that PDF. So those are some of the things that you should probably see when you're going through it. Um, if you're very observant, you may notice that I have a folder here, I have a folder here in our results list. We also have folders here. I don't want this to confuse you. We have a lot of different databases that we offer and um, each one of them has their own individual marking tool that lets us save things inside that database. So just like you go shopping at Amazon, they have a cart. You go shopping at Best Buy, they have a cart. Um, but those carts look different. And it just so happens that the company that runs this tool, which we call EBSCOhost, they own, we own several of their databases, they use a folder and that your items get saved into that folder within those databases. But if you go into another database like ProQuest, those, you're not gonna be able to save ProQuest items into that folder. So that's why we like to have Zotero because it lets us play with all of those databases and save it all in one place. But what's confusing is that they have a folder here that's very different from the folder in our browser window. So just wanted to point that out and make sure that that's not an issue. Um, it'll probably confuse you a couple of times, but um, just wanted to make sure that you know that that's, that's uh, how that works. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Okay, cool. Liz, I think you're... Steps there. Did you click on the... This, it looked like you sort of hovered over the title of the first one and then clicked on your Zotero browser button. Is that what triggers it to go into Zotero or is it better to pull up the next screen that has the, the fuller view of the abstract? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the only thing that triggers it to go is when you are in um, either the folder list and you click on the checkbox and then click OK. Um, so if there's a list of items, you have to do that. Or if you are in an individual item and you click on this, then it's going to add it. Um, so it just automatic, automatically adds it. So it's your preference. This one happened to pull down the PDF, but usually I would say if you see the full text finder, which for those of you who don't know, um, this means that it's not available in full text in this database, but if you click on this, you'll find it potentially in one of our other databases. Actually, it usually means that we definitely have it somewhere else. <laughs> so um, if you want to be grabbing the PDF of all of the documents, you wanna follow that. So I actually went too fast on that one. This is what the screen it goes to is. It's saying that it's available in this tool called Science Direct. And then it's opening up to this page, which right now, this is an example of them trying to get you to create an account in their website. Um, where you could save things that they own, but we don't want to do that. Uh, we don't need them. We have Zotero, so I'm going to continue without registering. And here you can see it has the PDF. It's moved back to the article, and when I click on this, it's going to save the PDF. Um, there was an open access version, which is why we were able to save it before, but I just want you to know that's kind of a process that you can do. All right. Uh, Zotero takes a minute to learn um, all these little features, so we are starting to run out of time. Um, so I'm going to move from the browser um, part of it to uh, showing you what it looks like on my desktop. So let me stop sharing, um, and I'm going to show you that computer application version of it. So now I'm going to share my desktop. You'll get to see all the things that are there. Um, let me close a few things so you don't have to look at them. Um, and I'm going to make it as big as I can. Is this a thing only accessible um, over to four years at Agnes, or is this something completely free? Completely free. Yeah, it was made by um, academics for academics, um, and so it is a completely free tool that is, um, you, I actually pay for for it on a yearly subscription because what you'll see in just a minute is that I have so much content in there but it took years for me to end up having this much content and um, how much do I pay per year I pay eight dollars so so you <laughs> won't have to do that but they are not looking to make any money 
they are just working on sustaining themselves and providing a public good. So, all right, let me, um, I'm gonna minimize your screen, get that off the thing. All right, so this is what my Zotero library looks like. If you were paying attention to when things were going down into my Zotero library when I was saving them, they kept saying my library. If you haven't added anything, you won't have anything in this space. My library is where everything is kept, everything that you ever found but never deleted. So it's all here. And you can see that I have some uh, duplicates. There's a way to handle that too, but we're not gonna cover that today. So you can see all the items that, um, because I had the way I had it sorted by date added, you can see that all the items that we were just playing with are right there at the top. Um, and once you get to this stage, it's a little bit overwhelming. But remember I said that you can create individual collections um, and that's a way to organize your time um, and organize your thoughts. That's what you're seeing over here. If these are things that I've worked on in the past, either it's for an individual class, so you can see things that I found for those, um, or um, I've created sub collections. So this is for the senior seminar in business. I wanted to identify three different companies to do a case study on. And so I have three different sub collections under that. So that's how you can organize your thoughts. Down here, if you're in Mary Kane's LDR, when I was preparing for that one, I was finding items that um, were available on the web uh, on the individuals that they were researching. So you can create these individual collections and the way that you do that is just right click on my library up here and then click on new collection. So you would do that. And that would create an opportunity for you to put things, put a new collection. So now I have cats and there's absolutely nothing in there. Um, I can go back here and I can grab the items that we have found so far. There you go. And I'm gonna drag them over to my cat folder. Sometimes this is a little awkward. There we go. So now I moved them to my cat folder. Now I don't have to worry about all those other things. My cat things are here. And then maybe, this is another trick that I use sometimes, I create sub collections by right clicking on that folder. And initially, I usually do something like this, useful. I create a useful folder and a not useful because I don't like getting rid of things because I never know when I might need it again. But when I'm working on a paper and I'm assessing the sources, I might look at this one and you can see the information about it over here. You can see that there's a URL that takes us back to it. You can see that it has the PDF there. As I'm doing my assessment of this, I might decide that, yeah, this one looks really useful. So I'm gonna definitely include that. Um, but I might find that this cat who came in from the cold, this looks more like a children's kind of work. It's not useful for what my purposes are. When I look at the abstract here, it tells me um, that just doesn't seem scientific. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move that one to my not useful. I could also just go ahead and delete it if I wanted. So if I came here, oops, I put it in the wrong one. Um, this is gonna be great though, because I can move it here. You'll see that it's never moved from my sub collection. It's still here and um, it's still here. And when we go to my collection, it's still there. So it'll live in all these different places and it's up to you to um, delete it from the places that you don't want it. So I can remove this item from the collection and that'll just take it from this folder and it'll still be available in the other locations. So here you can see that it's still under cat. But if I decide that I want to remove this um, and put it in the trash, it'll take it out of all of those places and so now when I go back to my library, it's no longer there at all. So that's how you can use collections and you can see how that can organize your um, resources. Um, what I wanna look at next is at the individual record. So you can see that each one of them has an individual record. If it has this little triangle, it has more information. So that might be a snapshot of the site so here it's taking me back to the URL. In some cases, this might just truly be a snapshot. Um, it might be a file that lives on my computer. Um, you can see that it has the PDF. So if I click on this, it should open up the PDF. 
I don't know if you're going to be able to see the PDF because I don't think I'm sharing my entire desktop. So let me stop sharing and I'm going to share my entire desktop again. All right. And so um, it's in that time it popped open. So you can see that it brought the PDF for me. So that's an option that we see there. Um, and the other thing is, is that right here, it's giving all the citation information. If it misidentified it, or maybe I'm actually looking at a book here and I realize that I'm going to be citing the book chapter, I can adjust that here by going to book section and it'll give me a new form to fill out and I can move the content around so that I can make sure that it has the resources that I need to cite that as a book chapter. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. Um, so that's one of the features that you see there is that it, how did it identify it and is it the type of identification? You can double check your authors, you can add more if you need to, you can um, edit any of the features here and there's always a URL that you can get to. Over here you'll also see notes. Um, this is where you can add a note. So if now that I have that work open, um, I'm going to go ahead and click add note. Um, and what I want you to see is down here over at the bottom, my, um, there we go, it moved away. See how it says edit in a separate window? I don't have to keep this attached to Zotero. I can open that as its own thing. I can minimize this. Um, I think I just already um, closed out that article that I was hoping to show it to you. Um, but unfortunately my screen is covering it. But anyway, you could, uh, open the article in this space here, and then start taking notes. This article is useful because, oops. And then um, once I click enter and I go ahead and I close this, and we go back to our Zotero library, you'll see that that note is there. Um, in my Zotero library. And you can do as many as you want. And these are searchable within your Zotero library. So you can see how beneficial that is. I know we're over time. Um, I wanted to show one more thing before I close out this and then go to Q&A. But see down here, I have a lot of group libraries. You have to create the group libraries in um, the web version. But if you create the group libraries, um, here's a biology paper that I worked on with another librarian and also two faculty members. You can see that this is all the resources that we found for our literature review. Chris and I divided it up so that he read those and I read these. And each of us took notes. So here's his notes. They're saved. There's the article. So it's really useful for having one place to do all of this. And then when we finally finish, remember this is the number we started with. This is what we actually used. Um, we were able to create a bibliography from these. So if I create a bibliography from collection, click on Modern Language Association, maybe that's the style that we're using. Um, I can copy it to the clipboard and I can um, save that bibliography. And let's see if I can quickly open up a document um, to show you what that looks like. So it'll take a moment. I need to show you one more thing before I go to Q&A because this is really important. Um, I need you to know how you can sync your account to the desktop application if you haven't done that yet. So let me just paste this in so you can see it. I'm assuming that everybody can see my Word document because um, I'm sharing my whole entire desktop and I just clicked control B to paste it in. So it's taking a moment to do that. There we go. So you can see that's a very nice lengthy bibliography. Almost all the items are perfectly done, but sometimes there's problems with it. We um, went back and we edited some of the problems except for this one. You can see um, this one, there's something wrong with that one. So that one needs to be fixed, but I can fix that in the Zotero library and then in the future it won't cause any problems. But if I'm, if I'm in a rush, I can fix it right here too. So those are the key features. Um, I have not gotten to how you can cite and write just yet. Um, and I didn't think that we would be able to make it to that today. But since we're in this um, 
version of Zotero, um, I wanted to point out that where you need to sync your account. If you're in a Mac, you're going to go up here to Zotero and you're going to click on preferences. If you are in a PC, I believe it's under edit. And again, it will say preferences. So click on preferences. It will pop open a window that has multiple tabs. And the tab that I want you to click on is sync. And this is where you insert that username and password. And this is what will sync with the web. So um, I'm going to stop now. You could go to the Zotero.org and log in, and we would see everything that we saw here on my desktop one living there because I have this sync to it. Um, but I wanted to stop, and I'm going to stop the recording, and we are going to go into Q&A. So let me stop the recording real quick.